Hi, it's Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Chasson VIP 650. Right. So as we start the walk round on the 650, you've got your aura light and your two fridge vents. And then coming behind the back driver's wheel, this is the indication of where your waste water disposal point is. So you've got a grey tap there with a lever on the top that you pull to drain off like so. What you would do is you would drive over the motorhome service bay on the way out of your site and open the handle to deposit your grey water. This is any water that you've, anything that you've drained down the plug hole or any water that you've used will go into a separate holding tank and it's very important in the winter that you drain this off to avoid it from freezing in the tank below. Above you've got your WC which is your cassette toilet. So ensuring that the blade is closed on the inside of the toilet you'll be able to lift the handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle. You've got a handle so you can drag it to your waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block. And then to empty, if you remove the cap, press the button, tip it out. Once you have tipped it out, there's normally a tap there so you put some water in via the spout. Give it a rinse and tip out again. Then if you're using the chemical in the liquid form, a cap full which is 120 mil of either the blue or the green into the cassette and it's good to go back into the vehicle. If you were using the tablet form in the cellophane sachets which come in the tubs, you put a pint of water in which you can do before you push the cassette in or you can simply just open the blade, flush a pint of water in followed by a tablet of your choice of either the blue or the green. At the back of the vehicle you've got your garage area so you do have a light it's heated by the heating system and it, you do have a 12 volt source and a mains 240 source when you're hooked up and handy tethering reels these are just your infill cushions for the beds and then coming around the back of the vehicle high level brake light and above there you do have your reverse camera and then the back panel has been strengthened in this part to take a bike rack so you've got bars there so you can just get a bike rack to fit at a later date. And then if you were wanting to fit parking sensors, they, will, they won't look out of place because these moldings on the bumper to take them so if you were wanting to put them on you would just need white parking sensors and they'll look like they've been fitted from the factory. On the back you've also got your LPG which is your liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So this fits one 6 kilogram propane bottle in. You tie the bottle in with the straps provided. To connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a hand tightened so no need for a spanner and it's a left hand thread so opposite threads with it being gas. And then you would turn on and off from the top of the bottle. Always ensure that it is turned off before you start travelling and then when you arrive and you're parked up you can turn your gas bottle on. You've got your other side to your garage. So you've got shelves here which just lift up and are on hinges. So you've got turnbuckles to put them away. And then coming down this side, you've got this locker here, which is known as your Techni box locker. So this has your fresh water fill up in. So go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections, as it's mainly just a brass tap on most sites. Pop your hose in there, wait until it overflows or until you're happy there's enough water on board. If you did have a full tank of water, and you're ready to travel and you want it to be a little bit lighter what you've got here is you've got a little drain tap which is called a travel drain opening this will make the water come directly out underneath the vehicle but what you've got to ensure that you have on is you have the pump on if you do it without the pump on it won't push the water out you've got to turn the pump on to eliminate from a full tank to a remaining of 20 litres so you've got enough water if you're doing a longer journey and you want to carry more payload and if you want to stop use your toilet on board or stop and have a cup of tea you still have a little bit of water on board to drain it off completely you've got to get underneath the vehicle 
and the, there's a little black bung which is a 15 mil compression fitting on the end of the hose there you just need to pull that off to drain off either a full tank of water or the remaining 20 litres across from the water you have all your electric units so you've got all your trips on mains electric when you're hooked up and you've got all your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to carry some spare fuses just in case they do blow a fuse you can replenish the fuse there and then this is your mains connection point so to hook the vehicle up you get your hooker blade expose the end slide the top of the hooker blade over the top connect the vehicle first then connect the site and do it in reverse order when you're coming to unhook so that you aren't exposing yourself to a live lead below you've got your flue for your diesel heater and then when heating the water on gas gas only so if you're heating it on electric the cover can stay on when you're traveling cover goes on when you rush the van cover goes on when you're heating it on gas cover must come off to allow the fumes out otherwise it will fail because it's got a build up of gas and can't circulate the fumes the best place to put this is in the passenger door pocket then you never forget to pour it on you've got your diesel filler which opens with the main ignition key and then below you because it's a new styled diesel engine it's got add blue so this is just for emissions so it's a 19 litre tank this will come on between the fuel gauge and temperature gauge when it indicates that the add blue is becoming low and needs to be topped up and it looks like an exhaust light and you'd simply buy it off the pumps or buy it in the drums and top the ad blue up fail to top it up will make the vehicle go into limp mode or fail to start tire pressures on the slam panel of the passenger door so five and a half bar which is 79.5 psi your leisure battery location is underneath the passenger seat your engine battery lives underneath this compartment in the cab floor and your bonnet release is on the side of the passenger dashboard so underneath the bonnet to the left hand side underneath the driver's side of the vehicle you do have all your fluids so starting off with your screen wash then this cover lifts off and you've got your power steering fluid and your radiator coolant brake fluid engine oil filler and dipstick your paint cord which is 249 for the blank or white an earth and then just behind here if you put your key in behind the passenger headlight and lift this cover up this exposes the positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start you've got a weight plate here so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight three and a half ton gross train weight you do have a tone weight on the vehicle but at the moment you don't so what you've got to do is with chassis on you've got to get a type approved tow bar which only they supply so you've got to come through the dealer for a tow bar if you were wanting to tow and then this will then change the plate and change it on your logbook so that if you are pulled over you do have a train, train weight because if not you don't have no tone weight HOL number is your build number which is unique to the vehicle so if you were wanting any part or any warranty claims if you just quote that number we'll be able to get the right parts for the vehicle so once inside the vehicle next to the habitation door is where your main 12 volt control panel is so you've got your master switch here which turns the vehicle on and off 240 if you are hooked up which will indicate here that you are receiving mains hookup if not you will just have 12 volt off the leisure battery next to it you have your main light switch which are all then individually switched so this is the master switch for the lights and then moving on you've got your pump which is the picture of the tap so if you want to use water you've got to have the pump on to pressurize the water flow so just make sure you've got enough water on board which i'll show you how to do so and then you've got the light on the side which is the owner light which is the light outside on the side of the motorhome and then all these correspond with these buttons down the bottom so you've got the one of the trailer which is your leisure battery reading 
one of the truck which is your fade engine battery reading your water level which is your fresh water as you can see you've got nearly a full tank of fresh water when that goes red it indicates that it's needing to be topped up and when the one below goes red it means that the waste is full and it's time to pull the tap open and drain the waste off for your heating on the 650 you do have a Wabasto diesel heater so you've got to have a quarter of a tank of diesel or more in the main tank and then you would turn it on at full let the combustion start and then you can adjust the temperature accordingly don't worry if the lights start flickering as this pulls such a high current through from 12 volt that that may happen for the first few minutes until it starts running at full optimum temperature got the light switch here for your blue lights on the floor and then you've got your main light switch and then below you've got an added switch which is the switch for your TV booster amplifier which is in the cupboard which I'll get into in a moment but you've got to turn this on for it to receive power in the cupboard above the fridge is where you'll find the location of your vision plus status TV aerial so if you are struggling to get a picture on your TV what you may need to try is just loosen up the top nut looking where the other motorhomes and caravans are pointing where you're parked pushing the pole up and then using this little toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial but always ensure when you are traveling or you're about to start traveling the aerials pulled firmly in the vehicle and it's firmly tightened up once you've got the switch on beside the control panel this amplifier will work and should you be struggling to get a picture you can use the amplifier to boost the signal or if it's too strong and it's on full what you may need to do is just turn it down a bit until you get a steady photo but it will tell you on here if it's red orange or green how good the signal is on the other side you do have your solar panels so this vehicle was fitted with solar panels so you've got a meter there which will tell you the voltage coming in what the battery levels are like and so on and then you've got the regulator which you just leave to do its own thing and concentrate on this to view the levels to operate your fedfit styled fridge freezer so you turn on and off here by pressing and holding press and hold to turn back on you've got an A which stands for automatic energy selection so the brain of the fridge picks out the best source and it's picked out hookup which is the picture of the plug if I was to unhook the vehicle now as we've got gas on it would turn over to gas if I was to start the engine you would get the 12 volt setting which looks like the battery which is designed to keep the fridge at the same temperature it was when departing so the idea would be pre-chilling it before you leave from home or if you're moving from site to site you'd use the battery setting to keep the shop and fresh if you didn't want to use the automatic setting you can just press the first square button on your left and it will move from different source you've got your temperature in the middle so 5 bar being the coldest when pre-chilling when you've got your shop in you just need to turn it down to 3 or 4 maximum and then on the far right you do have this setting here which is designed to stop the freezer door from freezing in on itself on the rubbers when at optimum temperature but when you are finished with the fridge freezer what's very important that you do is you take everything out you clean it out and the last thing you want to do is shut the door because once you've shut the door once you've cleaned it out that nice clean air becomes trapped and over time it'll become mold smelly air so underneath each you just pull these little toggles out they slide into these little catches and that'll keep air circulation running in and out the fridge during the time that you've got the vehicle stood up in storage in the kitchen area you've got three rings for the hob one electric hob plate two gas rings so this is the electric hob plate which indicates by the red light but you do need to be hooked up for that to work and then you've got your two gas so once you've used any of the hobs if you do allow them to cool before you put the glass lid down and then below you do have your your grill 
and below your grill you do have your oven you may want to take your grill pan and oven shelf out when traveling as this can be the main cause of rattling or wrap them up storage cutlery drawer which just pulls out then you do have your switches for your electric table in the lounge and your drop down bed which I'll get onto in a moment when we do the beds but below or should I say above you've got storage in this one but in this one's very important because this has got the switch on for heating the water on gas so this is where the cover must come off so if you're well camping and you're not hooked up and you want to heat water you'd be doing it off your gas or if you were in desperate need of heating your water, you can have your gas and electric on together. So you've got two settings on the gas. So you've got off in the middle, 50 degrees at the top, and then 70 degrees on the bottom. So 50 degrees is mainly for when you're showering, 70 for when you're doing the dishes. But only heat the water if you've got enough water on board. And remember, the cover on the passenger side by the door must come off, otherwise you will get a red light on here to say that it's failed. Either the covers, on or the gas has run out or it's not been turned on and it's not receiving a gas feed in the back of the vehicle you do have the washroom across the back so you've got your toilet so to operate your toilet ensure that the pump's on at the back you've got the blue button which is your flush and then you've got the picture of the diagram here so you'll get a light on or a, or a numerous lights when the cassette is full so pressing the blue button at the back I'll give you a flush always flush your toilet first to lubricate the seal and keep the blade from sticking and then open the blade push to the right use the toilet everything will then go into the cassette flush after use and then slide this back to the left and so shut the blade and ensure that you can get it out the exterior of the vehicle should it be open the cassette won't move and you'll know what you've done you just need to come back in and slide this to the left light is in a hidden place so it's underneath the sink on the worktop for the washroom lights toilet cabinet which covers the window as well and then open the window you just push the buttons in slide it out slide it all the way out to bring it back in and you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind and to depart the two press in the middle and the two shall depart storage this is this is showing that your hot water is hot and getting the temperature there and then across from the toilet you do have the large shower cubicle so you've got a handy hanging rail there for wet coats wet towels brilliant place to dry things if you've been caught in the rain you can open the skylight above the shower for ventilation after use but always ensure skylights are closed before you travel and then when you come to winterize it's very important that you remove your shower head from your hose Lie your hose in the shower tray and open all the mixer tabs throughout the vehicle. This will stop any water, especially folding up and coiled up in the pipe. You've got a concertina door here, so when travelling, you just put the strap on, but that'll shut the bathroom off from the rest of the vehicle. You can slide this along, and this is your garage access from inside, so if it's wet, you don't have to go round, you can go straight in from the back. And you've got your large shelves and your wardrobe and hanging rail. So to make your smart lounge into traveling seats, this is on both sides, you would just remove the, the cushions. Use the handle and fold it back and lift it up. You do have Isofix, so if you're carrying children in car seats, grandchildren, you've got Isofix on there. And then what you would do is you'd use the big base cushion again, put that in, followed by the backrest, and then you can fold the seat belt through, and there you have a full 
forward facing travelling seats which are quite comfortable not only for children but for adults as well so to make the lounge into a bed using the switch in the kitchen for the table lower the table down and then what you can do is pull the extension out and then fold the table over it'll wedge in there nicely and push it all the way at the front use the large cushion with the hard back which would go in here these are just wrapped up from the last owners of the vehicle push them all the way forward and then what you would do is you would use the funny shape one fold the leg out by pressing it forward that would go there rest half on the table half there and then use the other one the leg half on the table and half coming off with the leg and there you have a double bed underneath but above you do have the electric drop down bed which works with the other switch which will come all the way down so if you were using it as two double bunks you'd stop it at any height if you were just using it as yourselves just a two berth you bring it all the way down and that will come down to about waist height and then you can gain access on and off the bed Heads that side, feet the shorter side, and then below you've got nets. So if you were putting grandchildren or kids up there, they just connect onto these little bits here. And then the rings on the roof, and you've got the ladder there. So if you were stopping it at any height, you can clip the ladder on. Above in the cab, there is a key on that side to control the table and the beds. And then when putting the top, that must be turned on for the beds to work otherwise the switches won't work but when putting the beds back especially this bed take your pillows off just leave a thin duvet on and make sure nothing gets trapped between that box just on the gable end there and the bed as that's a switch so when it comes together the lights will come on underneath when it departs the lights will go off if anything's stuck in the middle it won't get a contact and that's when you know what you've done you've just trapped your bedding between the contact for the light switch on the underside of the bed so now in the cab to the right of the driver is where you'll find your handbrake and then on the doors you do have your driver and passenger electric windows and then your mirror adjustment which you would just choose the mirror you want you've got two on each side the top one and the smaller one being the blind spot to black the cab out on an evening you have curtains which go around the curtain track headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights your trip computer is on the end of the wiper stalk so if you press it will tell you your range your trip distance there average consum consumption instant consumption average speed average traveling times and you've got trip computer A and B lighting indicators and then you do have your cruise control which will bring on the little green light in the bottom of the rev count and you push up to set the cruise control if you wanted to speed up you can speed up and slow down just off the stalk so you don't have to do it with the brake or the accelerator you can cancel it here without touching the brake and you can resume it to the last speed set and you've got the speed limiter at the bottom so you can push up slowly goes up in ones push and hold goes up in fives and then if you feather the, fr the throttle you won't go over the speed limiter until you push it right at the floor and it will override it as a safety feature six speed manual gearbox reverse camera as a rear view camera and then when you go into reverse it'll bring on the grid 
which indicates that you are in reverse but that will work when you're going forward as well ears off is another word for anti-slip relief so turn your traction control off you've got your hazard light and you've got your locks your cab doors you'd have to manually push the lock in on the habitation door for it to lock heated mirrors usb for charging and 12 volt for charging you've got your temperature on the outside ring fan speed must be on at least one or more press the button in the middle which is your air conditioning and then on the outside ring on the right hand dial you've got your distribution and whether you're bringing fresh air in or you're recirculating air within the motorhome kenwood head unit turn on and off by the middle button here fm am digital dab radio bluetooth and you've got your auxiliary ports usb and aux you just press to go through so you've got radio which is fm usb ipod bluetooth spotify bluetooth audio and auxiliary and then standby you can remove the head unit should you not be wanting to keep the fascia on display and then when connecting the bluetooth to it you want to connect to bt506 dab find that on your device press pair and it'll start pairing your phone into here and then if you can answer calls through here and there's a microphone in the cab for taking and, and dialing calls when you're on the road.